You're listening to the Breezy Moms podcast on Digital Stream Radio. Sometimes you need a break, so you go. And when you come back, you're brand new. Hey, everyone. You're listening to the Breezy Moms podcast, a weekly show that chronicles the adventures of motherhood. I'm Candace. Now let's start the show. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back. How are you? <laughs> I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good. Did you like that? I told you I had like a um I have like a frog in my throat. I've I didn't know I could make my voice go that deep. Well, that's Did wonderful. Did you notice it? It's you know what? You're going to be a re- uh what do you call those a uh, 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 recording a uh, professional voice actor now? Mm. Cuz now you can change voices. Mm. So you know what that means. <laughs> right. It's Thursday. I that, know. I'm so excited to be back. That means it's the Breezy Moms podcast coming to you live on Digital Stream Radio and, of course, on Facebook Live and on all the places that, uh, you know, you guys can grab that podcast. Yeah. That amazing podcast by this amazing host that sits mm. in the studio and does the show every Thursday night. I know, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's uh, really exciting. I feel, I feel like I've been slowing down a little bit i don't know if it's probably the heat uh, you know you just like <laughs> just everything because you can't move too fast you might have a stroke I don't, it's just it's an intense time and i'm i'm i am trying really hard not to complain about the weather because the winter was long yeah the winter was long and it's coming like it's coming back oh, yeah. really fast. we're already at the end of july i so we're in the middle of July. I think part of our problem is that we always we're always thinking four <laughs> weeks ahead, and we don't stop and like relish where we are. Yeah. It's, it's only the sixteenth, but what, it, but it's is hot. It to the sixteenth? I don't know yeah, what it is. It's the eighteenth now. Okay, so it's the eighteenth. We're still it, only like mostly halfway. <laughs> It's the end. <laughs> See, it's that kind of thinking. We got to think is it's just halfway from the beginning. I don't know. But you know it's you know it's hot and you know it's going to be hot when you're actually drinking and hydrating at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have a bottled water and a truly in my hand. I'm like, how hot can it be? Yeah. Actually, today is good. Right, mm-hmm. so I today went outside and tonight we do this every time. I'm like, we're not going to talk about the weather, but it's a big and part important part of life. It is, and <laughs> today is good, and you go out there and it's very breezy and it's nice. The only thing, it's raining, mm-hmm. but I think this is Mother Nature's way of saying, Get ready. "I'm giving you a reprieve because <laughs> what's coming Saturday is going to be nothing but just pure like it's it's just it's going to be hot hell. I know. Like I I go back to remembering that video. I don't know if you ever seen it on 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 YouTube, but it's all over the place. And the video's titled It's Hot as Hell. Mm. And you have this black woman sitting next to the air conditioner. She's like it's 91,000 degrees up in here. <laughs> I'm sitting right next to my air conditioner. It's on 66. The motherfucker's on turbo. What the <laughs> fuck do I need to put this shit on? It is hot. Damn it. Shit. She's like, it is so hot. She said the devil from hell came and put his ass crack here oh on earth. God. I am dying. That's hilarious. And her that face. sounds like some 90s, some 90s Pepsi Cola kind of thing. Her face throughout the whole thing is just freaking classic. I know. She is like, literally, she goes like. She goes, you know, it's so damn hot down here. I, I can understand why. I Don't give me a gun. Mm. Don't give me a gun. And she goes, like, my neighbors, everybody's getting on my nerves. My neighbors getting on my nerves. <laughs> Barbecue every goddamn day. Who the hell's going to pay for all this meat? And, and she keeps going, going, I'm dying. It's the best. Sounds like an auntie you want to have. Mm-hmm. A good She's one. really cool. I love it. That's great. Yeah, so it is it is hot, and it's going to get hotter. Mm-hmm. But, again, winter was long, and it just ended, like, yesterday. So let's... I'm 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 actually happy to have on a sweater. I only put on a sweater because I knew I was coming here. Where the air conditioning you were be is actually us off. Out. It is. Off. Yeah, it's not on well, that's right good. now. Okay, it, it's it's manageable. I'm not sweating. I'm good. So the studio's comfortable. Yes, it is comfortable. <laughs> I feel good. I'm, I need to get comfortable. Hold on. Shake it off. Okay, so, I'm ready. so normally I would ask you a question, but before I do, I want to ask, how are you? How because you murdered something today. First of all, <laughs> I told you that in confidence off the air, okay? Like, <laughs> off the record. Oh. All right, so I'm officially a murderer. And I think sometimes, I mean, it was it would, an accident. It, is, it was an accident. And, like, what is that, manslaughter? That's, like, mm. not. I think you still get in trouble yeah. for that. Chip, Involuntary manslaughter. Listen, that's what it was. So I was getting ready. We were going on a field trip. <laughs> we were going on a field trip to the doctor's office, right? <laughs> and trying trying to be better about time management and getting everything. We've got four kids, 
three like um th- three semi adults like teenagers <laughs> teen adults and then me so it's four adults and four kids and we're trying to get out of the house on time to this doctor's appointment and we've got to walk like half a mile to get there right stroller potty I'm potty training three two and a half year old boys right now at the same time and that's so- not easy. It ain't easy. It's not easy to do one. So Emery just turned three last, I don't know when, a couple days ago. And the other boys were already starting to train. And so I just thought maybe we, I mean, we should just go ham, right? We just go all in. So now if we go out, so now when we're playing in the backyard, I have to have a potty outside. And we went to the doctor's office. So I had to take a potty with us. Anyway. I was trying to get ready and I went to move my car out of the way because I have this Cadillac stroller that requires space to get through the driveway. And as I roll back my car, I stopped and I saw a kitten dash. Well, I mean, like drag dash itself out from under the car, dragging his back leg. And I was just like, what the hell just happened? Like, I had no idea what happened. And usually the kittens move fast. It's actually a part of a litter for a stray cat that has been having a litter for like the last five years. Every year it's a new litter. And so I went to see if maybe I could see where it was. And it was just laid out under the under the bush groaning. Um. And I was just devastated. And so I ran inside because actually I have experience with having to call animal control because of these kittens like i don't i don't know what it is about me my house my yard but they like to come to my yard so i called animal control again and said hurry up and come because it's groaning but i don't know what happened so they came and then i he was looking under my car again i was like no no no, it already ran under the bush and he goes no i just it just ran under your car into your wheel well and i was like what the hell do you mean and i showed him the now dead cat that was underneath the the bush. And so he went to check and he was like, no, he didn't make it. And I was just like, I was really hoping that maybe he had just murdered. uh, Anyway, so he didn't make it. (laughs) But then we were looking, we're trying to bang on my car, trying to get the other kitten to come out from inside of my car. And we opened the hood and the kitten was hiding, like darting around the engine. And so, we tried to get it out, but in trying to get it out, it realized it could get around us and it ran away. But I just kept thinking, what if I had not known, like if I didn't call animal control, if I didn't see where the other one, like I would have killed another cat and it would have died on my engine, made my whole car, yard, house smell like death. I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't and have known the that temperatures it, that with we're the temperature, on? I don't drive my car. I could go easily. I can go a week without driving my car. So if I open the doors after a week in this heat and mugginess with a dead cat on my engine, I don't, I, I would have I actually, I know that I would have blamed the kids and James. <laughs> you guys spilled, you guys made something or left something in the car. Like, I just know that I would have done that and I yeah. feel bad and I might apologize to them later for like <laughs> what I know that I would have done in that scenario. But I just wouldn't have known otherwise and we'd just be driving around. And now I just think I would have had to sell the car. Yeah. Like, you, you have to get rid of the car at that point if there's like a dead cat living in your car in 100 degree weather. Yeah. Anyway. But at least we know cats, that whole nine lives thing. Doesn't it's no. not real, especially for kittens. So that's what the the officer said. He was like, "It's a kitten, so they're not really smart." A cat might have if a cat. I guess if a cat makes it to a certain age, then it's smart n- enough to get out of some sticky situations. They accrue those but- lives like we do vacation. <laughs> yes, yes. You have to work like forty two hours before you gain eight or something like that. <laughs> yes. So this poor cat didn't know that. Yeah. So I don't know if the cat was in the wheel well or if it was under the wheel i don't know where the cat was i just Man, know i rolled over it and she, it died she or and that's he, how i started the fucking morning she or he w- didn't even get laid in her life mm. that's forget sad. that the, but then so then the other cat must have come because it heard the other cat mo- like groaning so i just keep thinking at least the cat didn't die by itself but it's not really a good consolation so they did they take the cat yeah so away? they took the dead cat and then the other cat ran so um, the other cat's gone, which now is freaking me out. I'm just like, how am I supposed to get in my car now? F- afraid that open the engine. You got to open that. Hood yeah, but every I drive time. a fucking Prius. The Prius doesn't make any noise when you turn it on. No, but that's what I'm saying. Before you turn it on, just get into the habit of opening your hood and you looking inside. Listen, it's now. Now you know what something else you oh, have to do. God, I don't have that kind of time. I barely have time to put on shoes with straps. Then you're gonna end up with another dead cat. 
And furthermore, that mommy cat needs to be spayed. Mm. Like, they need to catch her, spayed her, and stop her from continuously having uncontrollable amounts of litter on your property. That cat is hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's a... um... I think it's a black cat, and every year the litter the litter is never black. Like it's always mm. <laughs> like there's also a stray Maine Coon cat running around, and sometimes the litter has spots. <laughs> it's just it's like a friggin' um, it's like Days of Our Lives. Yeah, in, you're probably in my looking neighborhood. at that cat and be like floozy, <laughs> floozy. <laughs> You floozy. I know. And every time I say that, I say, oh, it's a black cat. And I'm like, fuck that. (laughs) I can't. But I can't lie. That's what the cat is. I don't know. Anyway, so it's been four years. And the first, so the first cat that died. Is this ridiculous that I have these stories? The, The first time is because... I was feeding the cats. I was giving them water and milk and food and all kinds of stuff because I thought it oh, would wait, be so cool. Oh, so she was encouraging. No, no, no. Not now. Like three years ago before I knew that you weren't supposed to do that. And so they would come every day and I would put some stuff out for them and it would be great, right? But then one of the kittens got hurt. It didn't get hurt by me, but it got hurt and it dragged itself right in front of my door in the backyard oh, so that God. from where I was standing, I could see it and it just laid out. And I thought, oh, it needs some water or need- I was actually giving it milk, which FYI, you're not supposed to give cats milk. You're supposed to give them water. I didn't know. That's what they do in the movies. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, at least that's, that, I get that's all what my they did in Catwoman, right? Exactly. So... Um, the cat lays out. So I went and got it some milk. And usually as soon as I start walking towards the door, it darts away. So then I put it down and then it'll come back. And this one didn't move. And then as I got, I was like, something's wrong. And as I got closer, I saw that there were flies around it. And then I looked away. When I looked back, the, the cat was like, um, convulsing, like, and bouncing across the, um, the driveway. So I really knew something was wrong. And, this is when I had to figure out how to call the, um, cause I was like, I'm not calling 911, but I have to call somebody. Now I have their numbers posted on my wall. So now she has experience. But I had to call That's them and tell is. them. And mostly it was that this cat looks really hurt and it looks like it might die. And I don't want the daycare kid. I don't want my kids or the daycare. Kid. Like, I don't need a dead cat in my backyard. Like, come and help me. Please come and help me. So that was <laughs> my first. Over here. I can't. I can't. No. Who's... On the Facebook feed. Yes. I can't. I can't. I can't. So they came and then she get, she like um, chastised me for feeding the cats and gave me this whole long explanation for why you're not supposed to feed strays. And it's because strays will travel about a mile radius to come back for food. And when you put out food, you're actually calling other animals over and they get raccoons and and they'll get bigger and bigger. And given that I have a a childcare and you have little kids running around like raccoons, my neighborhood is beavers. Um, There's a fox somewhere. There is a, um, someone said they, some kind of wild cat, like not a stray cat, but like a bigger cat. I was like, that's something like that. And those can be dangerous. I mean, anything wild is dangerous, yeah. right? So I think, I think, don't don't run up on anything wild because everybody's trying to protect themselves. <laughs> but there's something wild um, in our neighborhood because my neighbors have, well, they had four chicken. Remember I used to, t- I used to tell you that they would come over every morning yeah. to eat the food from my neighbor's house. They were wild and cage-free. Now they're fully caged because they lost one. So there's only three of them left. One of them is gone. It's yeah. like snatched up in the night. So... Um, anyway, so I was told to stop feeding the strays. Stop feeding the so strays. So I did. I did. I stopped feeding them like three years ago. But this bitch still keeps having litters and bringing them back. And this is her neighborhood. So we get to meet a new litter. And even though I don't feed them, there are also some good spots with um, bushes and stuff around the house. My house, my neighbor's house. Yeah. So it's easy for them to live there. Well, I mean, lesson learned. Check the hood of your car mm. so that you don't fry a cat accidentally. Mm. Um, but, you know, yeah, well. And even that. Rest in peace, kitty. I know. Poor cat. So, thankfully, the kids were already inside, so they didn't see it. I told my assistant, and she was like, you murdered a cat? I was like, listen. <laughs> I like her already. <laughs> that's not what you're supposed to say. Oh, that's too funny. So, they didn't see it, and they didn't know what happened, and they didn't even see when the officer came, the animal control came. So, 
It was, I guess it was good, but it's weighing heavy on my, <laughs> it's weighing heavy on I'm me. so sorry. I know, it's so terrible. And I'm not even a cat person. I don't even care about cats. But these are kittens. It's not their fault their mama is out here in these streets. Being a floozy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Kansas, I have a question for you. I'm listening. How are your boys? Okay, so the boys are Hopefully great. Hopefully they're better than the cats. Hey, hey. It'd be a whole different show. I don't think there would be a show. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, so the boys are doing great. So I was mentioning that it was, it's, um, which one? Emery. Emery just turned three a couple days ago. Well, happy birthday. So Emery. happy birthday, Emery. And now he's like, you can't talk to him. He's like, I'm three. I'm three. But it's my birthday. And, and it's his birthday all week. All I don't know how long it's going to go. But every morning he's like, it's my birthday. I want cake. <laughs> like, well, every, of course he does. You know, they, they know. They know exactly what they're doing and what they're saying mm-hmm. to get what they want. Exactly. Exactly. And he so, wants cake. Damn he it. wants cake and it's still his birthday. He said, it's still my birthday. I was like, kind of. I don't know. So anyway, he's having a really good time this week. And because he was, I don't know what happened, but we started the potty training thing. I've been trying to train him because the other kids were training at their house. Their parents are training them mostly because I was like, I don't, I don't know that I can commit to training other people's kids because that's three, four kids running around your house, peeing on all your stuff. Like, I, but you might be up to something though, right? Because as humans, what do we normally do? We observe other people and then try to mimic and do generally. But if you're a person like Emery, who's been here before and doesn't have time for anybody's anything. (laughs) I was like, okay, the other boys went to use the bathroom. It's your turn. And he goes, no. I was like, go use the bathroom. No. Do you want to use the bathroom? No. Come and use the bathroom. No. Like he doesn't care what anybody is doing. He had no interest in it and he did not care. He didn't care that they got treats. He didn't care that they got stickers. He didn't care about any of it. He was like, I'm not doing that. I don't want to. No. And he just walk away. Well, you better work, mister. So I know what we're dealing with. I know what we're dealing with. But a couple of days ago, I took off his clothes. I was changing his clothes and his diaper, and he took off running. And I was like, it's the end of the day. I don't have time. I can't. I'm I just, James will be here soon. I got nothing. And so I just let him run around. And he was running around the house naked. And then I guess he was feeling some some feelings, some urges. And so he kept going to sit on the potty. And then he came back and he was like, Mom, I pooped. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Where? Where? Oh, my God. You sound like that Clorox commercial. Yeah, it was a it was it was a lot, but it was a lot of poop and it was in the potty. It's just kids always immediately then start touching them, like touching everything. And I was like, you can't touch your butt. Where's the poop? Where? Like, I didn't know what was happening. But because he was naked and this is not a thing that I I made up. There's a whole like naked potty training situation. I don't know what it's called. But because he was naked, he knew that just dropping a deuce was not cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when he has on the diaper, he's like, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. So he doesn't, when he has on the diaper, he's not, he doesn't come and say, I have to use the bathroom. He's like, he just, I, I, he just does what he wants to do. But without the diaper, he didn't want to be caught out like that. So anyway, that was two days ago. And now we're going on three days of him. So anyway, he was running around the house naked. And I was, I was trying to figure out how much I wanted to cover him up and like stop him because it's a it's a business and people are coming in and out of the house. <laughs> so he's like running around the house naked all day. But the my clients, um, one of my clients did the naked thing herself at at her house. That's what she did with her kid. So she was totally fine with it. And then the other um, the other kids parents were cool with it. They're not doing the naked thing at their house. Yeah. But, um, they were okay with it. So I also talked to them and, 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 um, just checked in with them. I didn't want to do everybody naked at the house, especially because we're spending a lot of time outside. It's like, I don't want to be on the news as the like daycare yeah. provider. I've got the kids running around naked, but they were cool with them being in underwear. So they were in their underwear in the yard all day yesterday. And then today, <clears throat> because, so this is something that I'm, I learned with, with Emery and also one of the little kids that naked is a thing that's helpful, but then under they can't handle underwear and pants. Like it feels like too much um, coverage. So today when we went on our field trip, I had the two boys in um, boxer briefs. So just boxer briefs. So it was a lot and they're a little bit loose. There's a lot more air going on. Like it just feels 
is commando, it feels a little less secure. Yeah. But they look like shorts and they're children. So I thought it was fine. And uh, and it worked. So I packed up the potty. I, I first thought I couldn't handle it and I was going to put everybody in diapers. And I was like, you got this. So I <laughs> left them in their underwear and then I put the potty in the stroller and I took the potty with us. Everybody potty before we left. They used the bathroom twice while we were at the potty. When we came back, they all used. Emery had an accident, but caught himself. He was like, "I'm peeing." <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, "Wait!" Which wait, I thought wait. was incredible because he was able. I, I don't know that I can stop peeing in the middle of peeing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, "I'm peeing." <laughs> so we got him over to the potty. So he had a little bit of an accident, but he still was able to recover. <laughs> So I thought it was great. And well, so he got he, some of it in there. Yes. Yeah, so it just reminds me of, of these Clorox commercials. The one where the little boy, mommy, mommy, I did it. I did it. And she goes into the toilet. She's like, where? And he just points into the bathtub. <laughs> I'm dying. And then, you know, of course, comes out the, the big jug of Clorox. It's just hysterical. Or that he's like trying to help her. And she's wondering where she got this, he- where the boy got this heavy ass mop and where the water was coming from. And he was dunking the mop in the toilet. Oh, and so the commercial is Clorox cleanable moments, right? Like wh- when you when you should use Clorox. Uh-huh. That's one of them. It's hysterical. Mm. I love those commercials. I mean, there's always a good reason to use Clorox <laughs> when you have one kid, let alone five or mm. six. So uh, I'm laughing because Miss Mia is saying that summer is the worst time for potty training, uh, which I can I I'm not sure why she's saying that. What I'm thinking is that when they're that pee like with the heat, the pee smell, the pee smell mm. is like kind of unbearable. But it's the I think it's the best time to be naked. You know, naked. It's it's not cold. It's not there. You don't have to have on a whole lot of clothes. Yeah. And you can manage if you're going the naked route. Now with Lincoln, we didn't do the naked route. He was really good at holding it. Like one of my daycare kids, they're like a star, all stars at holding it until like they can't possibly anymore. So they get trained to go when you tell them, and then you sort of have to work through with them. Okay, you need to start telling me when you want to go you know what i mean but they're not peeing all over the house because they're just like pros at holding it in yeah as opposed to kids who can't hold it in and they just like pee all over the house and and they they have to run around with a mop right and so now i'm running around with bare feet like patting on all parts of the, the um the carpet and like on one hand i don't have a ton of carpet i have area rugs but on the other hand i'm just thinking like pee seeping through my wood floors like i don't want that either so yeah it's it's a it's a difficult it's a, it's a challenging part of life and i, I it's, we're just going to get through it we're going to get through it it's also why to. i'm not having any more kids like, and you know honestly speaking i mean some some of this stuff these challenges can actually go into a child's um later years like 5 6 7 like my mother said i peed on myself in my sleep till i was like about 7 Oh, so that's a thing, a developmental thing that that sometimes adults get to, like, we push. I, and I feel like people are pushing kids to be potty trained earlier and fucking earlier. Someone just told me they're they're ready to go. At, they're, they're planning to do it at two. And I, and I was just like, it's just, it becomes actually training us. Like, we have to be trained. And when they're two, I just want to put them in a diaper and be able to go about my day like I can't imagine with a two year old having to stop in the middle of the supermarket or in the middle of whatever. Like part of it is, as a parent, you still have to get through your day. And two, I think two year old, two two years old is just too soon and too hard for everybody. Like there are two year olds who can do it, and the ones who do it easily, great. But the other ones who like you're stressing them out, you're stressing yourself out. Just so many different things that we get in our head that our kids should be able to do because so-and-so did it. Like, I don't have time for what so-and-so else did. It's great for you. And I might be mildly jealous for like a second, but I have to work with what I've got, whether on my end or based on my kids or else there's just too much stress. And but I, I mean, if handle, you have one child, that right. And that's all you have to worry about, then you may have the time mm-hmm. to sit there and say, and if you are at home and not working, Right, because you run a daycare. Right, then you may have the time to invest in teaching a two-year-old may. how to may. may. <laughs> but you know, you have two children of my own, of your own, and you're also watching other, other children. Kids. 
in your home. So you don't have time. For, ain't nobody got time for that. I don't. Listen, give me some pop. Let me right. drink. <laughs> That's all I want. Like, let me just sit in a corner and just watch them and just. Okay, so that's not what I'm doing. Soda, to be clear, (laughs) even with soda, but but just the idea that um, as one person you could manage like six kids running around peeing all over the house. Just you, like I feel like in order to do it, you'd have to be a drill sergeant. And what and it is what I'm doing right now. I'm I'm at the point where I'm sending them to use the potty like every half an hour and they'll say, oh, I don't have to go. OK, great. Just try <laughs> like but you've got to be on a time frame. And again, you're basically training yourself to look at the clock every 20 minutes or you're training them. Yeah. One of the things I almost wanted to do today was set a timer like a an Alexa alarm or some kind of alarm that goes off. But I was just really afraid that I'd be. Uh, training the kids like a classical training and then they would only go if they hear their alarm so i don't want to i don't want to do that but there's so many different ways to potty train um that i don't think there's a right way i think for every kid and every adult um every parent personality there's probably one that works better and i like to claim breeziness so the naked one is right up my alley (laughs) Breezy, 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 breezy. So, um, so that's awesome. So, uh, what do you? Well, what would you like to talk about? Today? Oh, so I want to talk about my trip. Did you know I went away last week? I well, that's the reason why you weren't in studio, and that's yes. why we didn't do a show it last is, week. It is. It is. Oh, so I, should... I was going to ask you, but I didn't know if you had a theme for. But you wanted to talk. No, about that's your what I want to talk about. My girls' trip, and I should. I just went on and on about Emery. I should probably just say that Lincoln is doing really well. And um, it sucks when you're not the, I shouldn't say it sucks, but I am thinking now that it's tough when you're the kid that's just like um, even keel, you know, like generally an easygoing kid because like you don't have anything for people to talk about all the time. Like you don't cause any ruckus. You don't cause any attention. And and if you're not careful, then you get forgotten. And I I realize now as I was just talking on and on about Emery that Emery is the like jokester, jester, attention grabber in our house from all of us. So oftentimes um, I've even noticed with Lincoln that he is um, he gets a little upset because he's not getting He's not, there's so much attention on Emery and now it's attention on him for the potty training. Right. Yeah. So he's been getting some, um, tutoring from one of my interns and has been like picking up, like really interested in reading and doing some math stuff. And so I'm trying to keep him engaged in that and like really praise him for being interested in this stuff and really picking it up pretty quickly. He got, uh, I hate to say he got a cell phone. James upgraded his phone and gave, so Lincoln was sitting right there and he goes, Oh, you got a new phone. So does that mean I can have that one? Mm. Like before we could even discuss it. (laughs) So James gave it to him. And of course it still has Wi-Fi, So he's able to play a few games that he wanted to play, but now he's all about his cell phone. Like he's got to charge his phone. Can he bring his phone out? And then it's in one of these leather wallet cases. So it just looks like a big timer situation. And, um, but now we have to have the conversation about like when he can play the game. You can't just sit and play the game all day. You can have a few minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at nap time. Like, and I keep saying to him over and over again, like, don't make the phone an issue. Don't make it an issue or else I have to take it away. Like, let's not make it a thing or I have to get rid of the thing. And he comes back with, well, mom, you said I couldn't bring my, my cell phone out on the field trip but you have your phone. And I was like, listen, mm. dude, <laughs> back up off me. <laughs> right? First of all, there are no games on my phone. Second of all, my phone is not for playing. Third of all, get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't question. You can do something and I can't. So I realized that I am not, I'm not ready yet for that challenge. And I need to go and read something or watch a video or like practice what my, response should be because I'm um, I don't want to do the because I said so thing but I fucking said so <laughs> I said so no I said so. well I mean so you you are you you're trying to do this now willingly right he has the phone so you gave him mm-hmm. the power to decide when he wants to engage with this item no like I just I, told him today I was no it's been it's been 
we tell him that he can have some time on it. The the outstanding thing is whether it's a con- if it's consistent. So the last few days, it's been consistent in the morning. You can use the phone for like 15 minutes before daycare starts. Yeah. Because once daycare starts, it's hard to get everybody away from it. right? Yeah. And you can use it for 15 minutes during nap time. So that has been my like consistent thing. No, but my thing is that, you know, he knows he has it, right? Mm-hmm. Like typically if parents are going to expose their children to technology, they would say, okay, here's my phone. You can have it for 15 minutes, then mm-hmm. I'm going to take it away. Mm-hmm. He has access to it at right, any time his. he wants. It's his. Yeah. Um, and so do you think that that's going to present a challenge? Probably. I mean, it already has. Probably. I mean, he just asked me for a laptop. I was like, what? I was like, you have a tablet. He said, yes, but it's not a laptop. You have a laptop. Mm-hmm. I was like, if you don't get away from me, I don't have time for he this He is right your now. child, though. He is. He is. He is your child, because that's exactly what you said to James. Oh, God. I need a laptop. <laughs> and then because Lincoln has James's old phone, James went and bought Emery a leapfrog. So it's a toy, but brought, bought Emery a leapfrog cell phone. And Emery has, a, um, he has Lincoln's old leapfrog laptop. Okay. So Emery was in the kitchen today at one of the bar stools with his laptop open on the chair and also talking on the phone. <laughs> And then put it down and did some more typing on the laptop. And then he shut the laptop really fast, grabbed his cell phone, and was like, I got to go. <laughs> Walked away holding the laptop and the phone. And I nearly had a heart attack. Like, I'm telling you, children with technology today, um, they're, they're born with it. I mean, it's – so a lot of people always say, oh, you know, I don't believe in evolution and blah, 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 blah. But I – I really do believe that as we get older and as more generations come, that we in print Mm -hmm. biologically at a molecular level, the ability for our children to understand technology Mm -hmm. because at a much younger and younger age, they're getting the ability. You can hand a two year old a phone and they can run circles on you yeah. with stuff that took you a while to right. understand and do. And I, I seriously believe that there's some sort of like uh, biological mm. um, transfer of, of, of knowledge, mm-hmm. of subconscious knowledge that we're giving to our offspring mm. for them to be able to handle the future that's coming. And that's technology. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I see it. I, I think we also just give it to them really early on where yeah. or they they start seeing it really early on, which is a bit of our the negative around technology that we're on it all day long, you know, that they see us on it. And so I can't be mad at him for wanting to be on his phone if I'm also on my phone. So yeah. it's making me check myself. Also, I have to check myself because my my interns want to be on their phone. And I'm just like, I'm on my phone because I'm trying to make this business work. But then I have to re- re- I have to really think: Am I really doing something businessy for the phone, or am I just scrolling? Yeah. And is that fair if I'm telling? And then you still fall back on just like a parent. You're like, dude, it's my business. I'm running this stuff. You can't use your phone because I said you can't use your phone. Yeah, it's a really. But then they don't listen to what you say. They only they follow what you do. So yeah. it's all it's all a challenge. And we even were just thinking. I said to James, James, I was. I was thinking, but I wasn't sure if maybe we should get an email address for Lincoln, give him his own email address because he is using James's phone and he's calling me on video um, on Google Hangouts and he's calling me as James. And then James is like, yeah, I'm not sure who else he's calling. Right. So like, he might be calling other people under <laughs> mm-hmm. James's contacts. And so one, I would like to know when it's Lincoln calling me versus when it's actually James calling me. And two, then I was thinking on a positive side then we could put the context in there that we want him to have access to grandparents godparents you know friends of the family that we're we're friends with that he talks to already and maybe he could have his own oh i feel like talking to grandma today i'm gonna call her on my phone right yeah that that feels like a positive side of it but i'm i'm unaware of what the negative side could be like him an email or emails coming through to him or ads coming through to him. Like Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't even think of what those negative things would be. So I'm a, I'm afraid. And he's not, and it's not like he can like, for example, set spam filters or we would have to set a whole bunch of things. 
And so, you know, there's you run the risk of, for example, an email coming in and having it be X-rated, and he right. could be exposed to that mm -hmm. um, if you're not careful with right. what restrictions aren't or are on the phone. Exactly. Um, but, you know, another thing, and I talk a lot about this with my friends because um, I also believe it's generational, mm -hmm. the way we handle technology. And so for us, Xennials, right, we mm -hmm. learned the digital and the analog. Um, it, it's a little concerning when we're seeing someone constantly be on technology, but for them, it could possibly be the way that they just communicate. Mm -hmm. And so the the funny part about that is that we were we were over at a friend's house for dinner not too long ago, actually, uh, the 4th of July, the day before. And we were we did this huge fire, and we're all sitting there just drinking, quiet, just watching the fire, and we're all on our phones. Mm -hmm. And one of them turns around and was like, yup. Just get off your phone and let's talk. <laughs> let's enjoy each other. Right. And so I'm like, I sent him a message and I said, why don't you just text me and say that? <laughs> He's got so mad. But it's like, you know. Um, it's the age. Yeah. It's, like it's, it's in a an group talking too. to other people. Yeah. It's like, yeah. text me. I'm right here. I know. I I'm know. always here, you know. So it's it's a, a thing where I'm, I think we are both, James and I are both wondering if we are giving him access so early and then it starts from now. Cause I know that now and he's five, it, right? Exactly. He's five. And I know 10 year olds have a hard time. Eight year olds are hard. Like it's getting earlier that her and Her 13 earlier. year old is about to get her first cell phone. Right. And mother is still even conflicted about that. Yeah. It's just, it's interesting because I agree with that to be conflicted or like wondering whether you're going to do it, but I don't see this as a real cell phone because there no, there's no calling on it even though he can video call, it's not, you know, like it doesn't seem to me to be the same thing. Cause it's not like, cause it's just Wi-Fi. Yeah. It's just the fact that Wi-Fi actually gives him access to a lot of stuff. So he's caught, like he caught, when I leave, I left yesterday to go to a meeting and I went to the mall and I was gone and my phone was ringing and he called me. He was like, mom, where are you? Is your meeting over? I was like, listen, I didn't, we didn't give you this phone so you could put tabs on me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I need a break. <laughs> yeah. I just got back and I already need another break. So it's, it is a, it's a decision, a decision. that as a parent you have to make, but just know that there's a lot of opportunity for, for issues to arise ever, right. as a result of that decision. Especially and making, if you start so early. Yeah. Making that decision. I know. So early. Maybe we shouldn't have told him that it was his phone and that we should yeah. have told him it was still daddy's phone and you can use it sometimes, you know, yeah. I don't know how we, we roll back on that now, but. Yeah. Anyway, that's how Lincoln is doing. He's like too smart for his own good. And, um, and he's five now. And I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like imprint this moment in my brain. Cause I feel like he's going to be 10 tomorrow. And we're, you know what Time I mean? Flies. Time flies. So when you're anyway, Prozac. they're good. James is good. And I'm really happy to be back. So I said, I wanted to talk about the trip I got yes. to do. So remember a couple months ago, I went for a weekend just one overnight into New York city. And I took Carolyn and I was all about like, just like decompressing for a second. This time I uh, took a trip to visit my friend Kima. It was her birthday a couple weeks ago. So I visited her in Santa S S Sacramento and it was four days. Now Sacramento is the capital of California. Is it not? I have no idea. I thought Los Angeles was the capital. No, that's just a big city and mm. hot ass people. I had no idea. Yeah, I think Sacramento's north, right? Yes. I believe, Nor I believe more so. north than Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> a lot more north. It's, I mean, it's even yeah, norther it's than. It's closer um, to San Francisco. Yeah. It's north north of San Francisco. Yeah. So I thought it was closer. I thought it was close to San Francisco. So I called her all like stressed out about what to wear because I went to San Francisco one summer and packed like I was going to Los Angeles, not it is. knowing that. It is the capital oh, awesome. Of California. Awesome. I packed to go to San Francisco like I packed for Los Angeles, not knowing that San Francisco gets down to like 50 degrees in the nighttime. And so I was in my tank top freezing, like chattering. And, and we were in a, um, in a bar, a bar next to the water. I was like, I can't, I, I can't, I can't even think like I'm so cold <laughs> and it wasn't yeah. actually cold, but if you're dressed for Los Angeles, like you can't handle it. Yeah. So anyway, Sacramento is amazing. It's, um, Actually, it was it was fun. It was really just amazing to go see her and spend time with her. And I think that that's been that's my longest trip 
away. I left at 1230 on Thursday and I got home at 9 a.m. on Monday. And that's the longest I've been away from my kids, I think, this whole time. And I thought that I could, I was just like, I'm going to go cold turkey, (laughs) like not going to talk to them and I'm not going to think about them. But that lasted for like three minutes. And I'm pretty sure I talked to James before I got on the plane. And then I talked to them maybe the next morning because then it would have been late when I got there. And then I gave myself a little bit of grace for it. So I was like, I'm already going to be away for several days. It's okay if I talk to them. As long as I'm not like on the phone a whole lot, a little check in here or there yeah. is not the end of the world. I didn't feel like I was um, uh, going against the whole, like, you need a break, go and get a break. It's still your family. You still, yeah. you know? Well, so, you can't completely check out yeah, unless you're checking you into like an insane asylum. But- exactly. But it's it's still a response. You, once a mother, always a mother. Whether mm-hmm. you're in San Francisco or in Florida, or and your mall. children, or at the mall, <laughs> you're the still street. the mother, right? So, so. But what I will say is that even though I miss them, I missed all of them. That doing things like packing my bag and only having my stuff in my one bag. Mm-hmm. I had one bag. It was a carry on. I didn't even check any luggage. Go into the bathroom by myself when I felt like it. Right. It's gold. Like fucking gold. Making decisions like Kim and I made some of the decisions we made ahead of time. But a lot of the decisions we made like on a dime, like I think we should do this. Oh, no, let's do that. And then we just did it. It was like no coordination. There was no like, oh, it's too late or we might not be able to make it or blah, 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 blah. Some of the best times that we have in our lives are unplanned events. Just go with the flow oh, look, there's a bar. Let's go in and have a cocktail. Yeah. And before you know it, you're playing pool, you're meeting people, mm-hmm. you're having a good time. Now, and- you say that, and I want to say, James said to me, you're going to get there, it's going to be late, but you really, you only have a couple of days, you should just like dig in and go out, you guys should go out that first night that you get, that you get there because like you only have a few days, make it last, make it count, right? And I was like, listen, first of all, don't tell me how to enjoy my Mm. time. This is my vacation. You spend your vacation how you want to. And also, do you know who Kim and I are? Like, we have been two old ladies since we were 19. (laughs) So I got there and I called her and I was like, hey, um, I'm hungry because it's 11 p.m. my time, but it's only 8 o'clock here. Should I get some food? And she said, girl, I already got pizza. I got to her house. She had pizza. We sat on the couch. We did like some chit chat. Um like catching up. I think we watched something on the TV, but we really just like chilled, right? Chilled and vegged out on the couch. And I said to her, do you want to go out? She goes, girl, no. (laughs) What? Why? (laughs) And so we just sat and did what we do, right? And even though I don't have some big, oh, and then we went to a bar and we saw a blah, 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 whatever story, I still feel really great about how we spent the time. Well, you know? it's, it's a very personal, intimate friend uh, that you wanted to connect with mm-hmm. again in person. And you got to do that yes. in one of the most intimate settings. And that's in your own personal spaces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, when you want to spend time with friends and you do so, and not that there's anything wrong with taking friends and going out to a public place, but that also presents an opportunity for distractions uh, that could potentially be a really, truly amazing experience and mm-hmm. sharing, hey, this is what you've missed since we disconnected. Right. Um, and the public spaces sort of kind of tend to take your attention elsewhere. Oh, look, darts. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. pool table. <laughs> oh, uh, what's that beer? I've never had that one before. And so you really have a good time, right, with a good friend. opportunity to just connect. Mm-hmm. It was great. Awesome. It was great. So that was the first night. The second day, we, again, just sort of knocked around. We had, oh, I went to the waffle experience. I don't know if this is a thing all around California or whatever, but it's like everybody goes to Los Angeles and goes to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Well, I know the yeah. Waffle Houses are big down south. Yeah. Like, so, once you start driving, you hit Maryland, you start seeing all these Waffle right. Houses and then all over Ro- the place. Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles is a thing for Los <sighs> Angeles. And then this place is called the Waffle Experience. And it really was a fucking experience. Like, I do had, they have, like, all these different So they kinds? have all kinds of sweet and savory waffles. So I had some kind of like, um, uh, fish, like, fried fish with a mango salsa and arugula. Like, it was one of the savory ones. And I, 
it was 11 o'clock in the morning, but it was really two o'clock for me. So I was starving and it was, deli- I mean, it was absolutely delicious. They had a corned beef hash with real, um, no, 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 this place didn't have that corned beef. They had a, f- uh, I almost called it fat back. It was like a pork belly hash. It was a pork belly hash. It was mm. basically fat back. Anything with right? pork is good. <laughs> but like whole chunky fat back. <laughs> It was really good. And their signature chicken and waffles, which Kima got, I got to taste a little of, and it was delicious. So It sounds delicious. That though. was fun. And then we went to some um, vi- vineyard, a wine, a, a vineyard <sighs> in Amador, something like that. I think that was the least exciting part of the time, but it was still cool. It was a pretty drive there. Uh, although I'll say a lot of the drive in and around San- Sacramento is like sh- scary as shit. Like on one hand, California driving is scary because of the wide freeways, mm-hmm. right? But this was driving through the mountains with like no fucking guardrails. It's like we're gonna die. How how are people surviving? Here? So you did you take the coast um highway down? Like no, so Route Five, or did you go down like t- to the valley for the, to the winery? The valley? You mean Sonoma Valley? Like. Um, like into the valley, right? Because you have the coastline of California. Yeah. And then you have right on the other side of the mountains, you have the valley that goes right through the middle of the state. Yeah. I don't know. I just know that there were always two options to go. One was on the highway, which felt like the safer route after doing the other option, which cut through the mountains. So you probably mm-hmm. ended up going at some point into like the valley area mm-hmm. because there's a lot of wineries and a lot of mm-hmm. like uh, steakhouses yes. and stuff. Yes. So, so we did that, but it was scary. I mean, it was like driving on a roller coaster. Because you can't, they're blind curve hills down. I was like, we're gonna die. It was very, I, I, I was not relaxed at all. <laughs> like, it's, it's a very tense moment, especially like when you start going into places like L.A. Mm. and seeing how they drive there and, and the traffic jams. But at least then you're not moving. You're not going that fast, right? This is just like two lanes. There are no guardrails. There's no bump on the side of the road, and and it's a steep drop. I was like, if we come off of this um mm-hmm. road the the tires are gonna dip and the car is gonna flip over like we're gonna <laughs> die <laughs> so, so anyway that-, that was really stressful but we did that it was fun there was a um a ma- cousin's main lobster i feel like this is all about food there was a cousin's main lobster truck that came so, they had, so we had lobster tater tots which was like the oh. weirdest thing to be I mean, it's tater tots, but with lobster and and ceviche or whatever drizzled on top of it, like the fucking best fifteen dollar tater tots I've ever had. <laughs> the best, okay. <laughs> and then we went back to her place, and she lives in this amazing place that has um, this woman owns the house. And the house, I was like, is this a bed and breakfast? The house is beautiful. They have a pool. I mean, it's incredible. I thought we should have just stayed there if we weren't going for this like wine tour kind of thing so the next day we went to napa valley and we went to the town called calistoga which is right next to napa and calistoga is on top of a a natural hot springs and so all of the water has the minerals in it and like the hot springs like the water comes out of the ground and they have to put it in cooling um tubs so that it doesn't burn your skin and then you rewarm it to use the shower but all the shower water all the pool water all the spas i got a mud a mud bath i got yeah. a mud bath that is infused with the mineral water and the i mean it was just incredible and i thought i i thought those kinds of things were kind of frou frou anyway you know so oh, i went to a spa blah, blah, blah. i like i didn't think it was a big deal but you remember a couple of weeks ago when i got a splinter at your house yes i got a splinter on my hand and i couldn't get it out and after that it like um raised a little bit because it was um upset that the splinter was there and then it realized the splinter wasn't going to come out so it just started to kind of like callous over the splinter on my hand and after the weekend um in calistoga when i looked at my hand the splinter was gone huh like i don't know what happened but it like sloughed off the <laughs> i'm getting out this bitch <laughs> I'm getting out between the and so then I just kept thinking because there are lots everywhere at the spa and around Calistoga talks about the healing powers and um like the healing powers of the hot springs and the minerals and all this stuff and I was like this is a physical representation like I can see not just the, the not feel just the good. not just the feel goods or the toxins that I can't see or like don't know <laughs> really know about I was like this splinter was a fucking toxin and it is gone and I'm so happy so I might actually get into mud baths I might. 
I might. Hey, listen, you never know what your experience is going to be if you if you don't try it. I know, but I wanted to ask, so you were in California. They've been having a lot of earthquakes recently. So there was none of... when I was there. Okay. But they have been having them, and they haven't had um, much in, San Fran- in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Kima said that they had one. They heard one had ha- was happening, and they didn't feel anything. But then they could see the water, like, sloughing back and forth in mm-hmm. their pool. So it was, like... Big and like I I don't I can't even imagine that that you can see the water moving but you don't feel anything. Well, I, th- I I think I was watching some some of the news that came out of California when they had the seven point one earthquake last like a week and a, a week half ago, ago. Um, and they're saying that there's two types of earthquakes that you can have one that shakes the ground violently and then you have waves mm-hmm. right and so. If you happen to be on one of those wave ones, you really don't feel it, but you see it manifest in how the the trees or the water and everything around you, all the materials start Mm. reacting. Um, And a lot of people say that the feeling that you get is like vertigo. Mm, Like you get very dizzy and you want you feel like you want to like fall down. Yep. But you're not really like shaking yourself. You just get that like, whoa like an undulation yeah yeah and so um and and so that's probably the reason why the water was water doing was that moving, but you yeah. didn't feel the, the no the so nothing happened while i was there it was go- sacramento is gorgeous uh napa the valley is gorgeous is gorgeous yes it's you know, really it's, really really nice so. and, the, and the beauty of of it like for example when when i went i was hanging out in la i had gone for the grammys one year mm. and so then we drove south we went into escondido uh, where my friend has uh, a timeshare, and he also has a house in in that area, in Temecula, mm-hmm. and then we went to the casino there, and we drove into San Diego, which is way south. That's that's the closest major city to the Tijuana border. And um, but the beauty of it is you're driving down the highway and you can see the mountains mm-hmm. and it's 80 degrees outside, but there's snow on mm-hmm. the, on the mountaintop mm-hmm. and you can see it. It's yeah. just absolutely gorgeous. It's a cool place. Yeah, it is a cool place. And Kim is trying to get me to move there, but it's like not a place that I want to live. I want to visit and um and enjoy like the visit. The the other two things that we did on the trip that were memorable and like exciting, we visited the Calisto not Calistoga, um Castello di Amorosa. It's a it's a vineyard, a wine vineyard, and it's got a castle. It's got a medieval like 13th century castle, and I when I, we were walking around, it was like why do we have a castle in California? Like I was trying really hard to figure out how, like why we would have had a castle in the 13th century. And everything in my brain was like, this Monastery. doesn't sound, no, it's not real. <laughs> it's not real. No, it was just built in 2007, but all of the materials were imported from Italy and are from like 13th century um, Italian castles. So even though it the castle itself is only 15 years old on that property, the pieces of it are old, which gives it this like intense um, uh, realness. You know, it makes it it looks authentic because the pieces are authentic. You yeah. know what I mean? So you're sitting there and everything everything about the the ironwork and the stones and the bricks and the um the murals on the the walls were also painted by Italian like people who were um taught in the medieval ways or whatever. Every they have a um an armory and a torture chamber. Like everything about it seems real and it's because the pieces are real even though the like structure itself is not. Yeah, because I don't think we had structures no, here. I mean, no, not in not the 13th European century. Structures, no. <laughs> structures in the 13th century. We I know, start... so that's why my brain was just like, something feels wrong. Because <laughs> there <laughs> there are older monasteries, but they're yeah. like Spanish-style ma- mm-hmm. monasteries that exist, but those didn't come in until like late 16th, exactly. early 17th century. Exactly. I know, so that's why my brain was like not huh? computing. Well, well. But it was very cool. And then we were just laughing at just the, the sheer grandeur of it all, right? Because the wine business... Is such a is a crazy and inc- uh, like you have to have so much money to open a wine vineyard, right? Because there's so much time that goes into it before you're making any money, and so he built this thing over 15 years before he made any money on the wine. But knowing that he would, and I guess having access to it because his family had another winery, yeah. um, so it's just it's like ridiculous grandeur. And again, 
bringing all of that stuff from Italy is crazy, but I appreciated it. So he, he had emu. Makes you wonder, did they destroy a castle there to come no, bring it they here said, and build it? No, they said it was all stuff that was um, going to be thrown away. So it was it's all recycled materials from places that were either breaking down or they were tearing down or, huh. or were going to get rid of anyway, stuff that would have been thrown away. You'll have to show me when we're done yeah. with the show what it yeah, looks it was like. Very I would cool. love to see it. And then we were laughing because we're like, you know what he was thinking after all of this? Like, you know what would make this like finish? I think... I think it's almost done, but not quite. You know what we need? Emu. <laughs> like, you finish emu. the tour, you come out of the back, and I was like, oh, it's an ostrich. And someone was like, no, it's an emu. I was like, how the hell am I supposed to know the difference between an ostrich and an emu? And how like super fancy of you that you needed an, an emu and not an ostrich. So so I know what an ostrich is, but I don't think I can recollect what an emu is. I mean, looks it looks like, like an ostrich. It looks like an ostrich. I don't know is what the Is it fluffier? Is it? I think it's less fluffy. I think it's a little less fluffy. And I think of an ostrich of having that perky tail that's like white and black on the tail. This thing doesn't have it. But it is, it's a very interesting looking animal. And it looks like major Jurassic. Like it looks like a living dinosaur. The huh. legs of it, the face of it. Um, it's it's really cool. And then Kima, Kima went to get close to it and it started growling. And she's like, oh, I'm too close. Ah, so, anyway, that was gotcha. cool. And then the last thing that we saw that I, I realize I've been talking a lot about lately and and is like definitely my jam between the castle, going to visit the castle. And then we went to the petrified forest in Calistoga. Have you ever been to a petrified forest? I have not. Explain. So a petrified forest is like a volcano erupts and covers the forest and it like freezes the um the wood the woods like the trees or whatever and they basically they turn to stone and or i should say it looks like stone but the the science behind it's like the 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 volcano erupts and the shock of the the eruption knocks over all of the trees and then either the lava or the hot ash falls down and just like snuffs out everything. So, and it happens so immediately and at such an intense um, heat that it snuffs out all the oxygen. So there's no fire. So the things don't get destroyed in a fire. They They get preserved like um, petrified, preserved like Pompeii. That kind of thing. So this one was a volcano that happened 3.4 million years ago. And the ash um, dropped 150 feet of ash on top of the, the forest. And then there was an inland sea that then like covered the whole area with water. And then that area, remember the, the mineral springs? Uh-huh. The area is rich in minerals. So the minerals were carried by the water. And the mineral, the minerals and the water soak into the ash and the the trees, right? And then when the water evaporates, the minerals are left behind. And so basically, what you end up looking at is a um, like a three D image of the negative space of the thing, because now all the um, organic material has so all the minerals fell into all the empty spaces and then the, all the organic material is composed gone. Yeah. is gone. So when you look at it, it looks like a shiny shimmering rock, but it's actually the minerals that filled in the space. So anyway, the, the cast that's left looks like a tree. Like you can see the bark, you can see the splinter in the wood. You can like, you can see so many cool things. And on top of that, it's fucking shining. It's like from twilight, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> like, it's just so cool. So when I saw it, I saw like a written description of it and I was really excited to go and see what was going on. Uh, But in my mind, I had an image of standing trees. I thought we were going to be in the woods and there were going to be these like standing trees that look like stone, but none of them are standing. And it's this place is only a few, it's like four trees is the exhibit and then a few um, like chunks that were blown. So the shock knocks over the main part of the tree, but all the pieces at the top of the tree splinter and like go for miles, you know? Yeah. So there was just lots of history about how they first found it. And that now, like this is 3.4 million years ago. This is the, the earth, like erosion had to then expose all of this stuff. All of this stuff was covered up by 150 feet of, um, ash. ash and dirt and land and whatever. So, the guy was just explaining that it happened so long ago and it's still here. 
and it has so much more time before other things are exposed, you know, yeah. because they don't have the kind of funding to just, um, well, if you're going to do an appropriate, like a proper um, excavation, you need to know what you're doing so that you mm -hmm. don't disturb stuff, but they don't have that kind of funding. So they would just have to like start digging in a random area and hope that they find something and hope that they don't mess up something. So they would love to have the kind of like digital mapping whatever technology, technology. Like using sonar to exactly all of that stuff to find where the things are so that they go go and dig in the right spot um but short of that they just have to wait for more things to to erode present naturally. themselves yeah. right to erode naturally and present themselves and if this happened 3.4 million years ago like it's possible that that won't happen like it could outlast the like human existence on the planet yeah. you know what i mean so it was just that moment that like that timeline itself was insane. It's like mind boggling. And on top of that, this one that I, I'd never even heard of a petrified forest is not the only one. And there's some really cool one in Arizona. And that one is super cool and more famous because the area um, nearby where the minerals are, they're all colorful minerals. Yeah. This place has like brown and red and stuff, which sounds like, loser if you can if you hear that there are places that have purple minerals and like green and like really cool colors so those petrified trees when they when they um look at them they look like a rainbow inside yeah well it's just you know if you want an example of something a little bit more current and how time can change an object just imagine dropping a mcdonald's french fry under <laughs> your seat and finding it a year later when you when you go look and clean and it's like it's oh shit it looks exactly, exactly like a french same. fry but it's super hard right a petrified <laughs> french fry oh yeah God. so i think everything that falls under a car seat is petrified for every forever quarters uh, everything right. no i found like cheetos like yeah. cheese puffs that's yeah. too funny no, so I had a really, really good time, and I'm I'm glad that I went. I'm glad that I got that time with my friends, like, really incredible, but also glad that I got some time away by myself. I When I was leaving, I was like, I don't even know what I want to do. I don't even know what I would like. I know that I want to go and hang out, but I don't know how to be without them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I realized on this trip, because I was without them and got to do exactly what I wanted to do for as long as I wanted to do it, how I wanted to do You know what I mean? That I, I like that petrified forest shit was my jam. That castle tour was my jam. And so now I'm like, Ooh, are there other castles? Can I go to another castle? Can I go to another forest? Like do you think that, that now that you've had this experience, mm -hmm. right? Do you think that it would be cool for a mother to have, like to do a bucket list of things that you can do when you have me time? Yeah. Um, or make a bucket list and then figure out a way to get it done. Yeah. Right. Cause you'll never have me time unless you take it. Like you'll never, it'll never come up unless you take it. So, <sighs> I think that would be a great, we should just use that for our um, mom so hard tip of the week. This, this week should be to take a few minutes and think about things that you want to do and just make it as your mom bucket list and figure out how you can get them done on your own. Some things like now I want to take the kids to a petrified forest, right? Yeah. But short of going to see that, I had no idea that I would be interested that I would be as interested as I am in it. And it's because like, I'm trying to do this like nature thing at work. And, and so there's a reason why I'm interested in it, but I didn't, I wouldn't have, if I told you, if you asked me what I wanted to do, like that wouldn't, that wouldn't have come them. on my, that hmm. wouldn't have come on my list. And then we went and we went to an antique shop and I found this old um, brass scale that I brought back for the kids. Like, it there's was just a the lot greatest. of amazing stuff in antique stores. Let me tell you, there's some really good ones up in Massachusetts. Mm. On, on your way into the Cape, mm -hmm. there's like this amazing spot where they do all these antiques. They're awesome. You find so much amazing stuff. Very cool. Like, yeah, I loved it. But again, I would have never had time to go antiquing if I had my kids with me. Yeah. My whole family. And then I'm just going to wrap up by saying like, shout out to James. He did an amazing job with that um four days that i was gone and we were laughing afterwards because he because he he took the kids to a birthday party that i i was gonna do if i would have been there and he's like people um what people do to dads is is sometimes unfair like it's funny but it's kind of unfair and it's like oh how are you handling like are you are you okay do you let me know if you need me to come over like candace is gone do you are you okay and he's like i'm fine like 
they're my kids. I'm fine. You know what I mean? And so I was talking to another mom and it's, we do dads a disservice. On one hand, it is funny to talk about like, yeah. they don't know how to do things. Their inability to, exactly. to like watch two kids. Come exactly. Out. But I they think do it all the time. They do. They should do it all the time. We should give them opportunity to do it and we should not um, make them feel like they can't. I don't, I don't think that I do. I think, um, I think we do, we say things in jest and, yeah. and James knows that I know that I know, especially cause I just like, I like throw up my hands. Like I can't handle it. So he's pretty good at it because yeah. he, he has to be. But, um, I think, but we should take care when we're talking about dads, especially dads who are, are, are like, they are there, you know, are there mm-hmm. and are doing, are working just as hard as moms are working and, um, really want to be, um, I guess sometimes it feels like when they want to, but like are trying to be equally yoked with, with moms in the parenting piece, you know? No, but I think given presented with the opportunity to be alone with their kids, fathers are going to be fine. Right. They're going to be fine. I mean, there's, there is a, 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 a scientifically, I believe, um, you're trying there, to say moms there, are better? There is research behind the fact that mothers tend to be a little bit more cautious at the things they allow their children to do than fathers would. Because <laughs> fathers are a little bit more like, huh, you know, if fine. he falls down, he'll be fine. Right. You know, while mothers like literally freak out about, you know, should I put something on this corner before mm-hmm. the babies get up? Because I know they're going to come around the corner and bang their head. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a lot of research behind that. But nonetheless, I believe. In my experience with most of the men that I know in my life that have kids and are there for their children, they're more than capable. They're and more they'll be than fine. Capable. Yeah, you might come home and find a little bruise and here and there. Forget or the sp- bruises that, yeah. well, Emery did have a bruise. <laughs> but um, the house was amazing. Yeah. Like the house, I was so ready to come back to, like, because if I could come back after a night. But I feel the like they crazy. do that at like right at the right very before end. I came, right? Like, right before. Are you kidding me? There was like a mad dash. Hurricane probably came through your yes, house and fixed yes, it. Yes, it was great. But things looked exactly the way it did when I left in a good way. Um, everything was running like literally. Literally, my shuttle was pulling in and James was pulling out to go to work and he stopped to help me get my suitcase in and then he went to work and it was like a regular, like the transition was so super smooth. I really couldn't have asked for that's I amazing. Ask for anymore, so. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. And I'm know, glad that I Cali did. was awesome. I did. It usually is for everyone that goes. Really, it's a beautiful really state. It really is. So now I have to figure out where next. So of course, everybody said, oh, you should have told me I would have come. It's like, oh, like. Planning around so many people is hard, yeah. but I really should try to schedule. I really should schedule like a mom's trip and just have it out there. If moms want to come, just like we'll make it work. Yeah. So let me know if you're interested in a mom's trip and you're interested in helping plan it because like anything with more than two people is insane. Um, let me know because I I would love to schedule a mom trip. Do it up. I know. I know. It's going to be great. And it would be really it's everybody be like, I have no kids. <laughs> like, Let's go. Um, all right. So just to reiterate, our hashtag mom so hard tip yes, of the week. Yes, is to make a mom's bucket list. That's right. I love it. Make a mom's bucket list and tack it up on your wall and then figure out when you can make and when you can start checking things off because the, the time is never just going to come. You have to like you, you have, have to, to schedule it. for it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in on Facebook Live. Uh, we are here every week, and well, most weeks. Uh, please like and share the show so that other people find it. And we will see you next next week. Until then, bye. This show is produced by Tom Ortiz at Digital Stream Radio. It's available for download on Podbean. Follow us at Facebook at Breezy Moms Podcast or email us at breezymomspodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, don't stress, just breathe.